us here as well. OK, right, a few of you mentioned uh, how the Labour leadership contenders are handling this issue. And what's happening right now, I think, actually, is that the National Executive Committee, the Labour's ruling body, is meeting to agree some of the ground rules for the Labour leadership contest. And somebody who's been keeping an eye on it is our political correspondent, Helen Catt, who's coming on in. Um, so the NEC meeting happening right now. <laughs> Shuffle in there. Shuffle in there. Um, so just explain to us, Helen, what they're actually deciding at this meeting and actually the ground rules that are set in stone and they can't really decide anything about it. Well, as you said, they're, they're sort of looking at sort of the rules of the contest. So the ground rules that are set in stone is we know that to get on the ballot in the first place, candidates are going to need to get 10% of uh, MPs and MEPs. So that's just over 20 uh, to get on the ballot. They will also need the support of 5% of constituency parties or uh, affiliates. So that is what you need to get on the ballot. What the NEC will be looking at today, though, will be the overall time frame for the competition. Now, we're thinking competition contest. We're thinking that might be about... It is a competition. Weeks. Well, it is, isn't it? You know. But uh, thinking that will be likely about 12 weeks, but it could go longer. We don't know. So they'll be looking at that. But the thing that's really going to focus attention is that they will be looking at who can vote. Now, you might remember the registered supporters scheme was brought in in 2015, the so-called £3 supporters. Now, the, what they'll be looking at are things like a cut-off date. So in 2015... The fee for joining up to be a temporary supporter and getting a vote in the leadership election was £3. You had two months to do it. In 2016, when Owen Smith challenged Jeremy Corbyn, that was a much higher fee, £25, and a much shorter time, just two days. So there's quite a lot of leeway in what they can choose to, to set out for those, those parameters. Might all sound terribly technical, could have a bit of a big impact on uh, everyone's chances, really. Well, they ended up going to court last time, didn't mm. they, over these rules? Um, let's have a look at some of the contenders or potential contenders because not all of them have actually declared. We've got Keir Starmer, Jess Phillips, Lisa Nandy, Emily Thornbury, Clive Lewis, Rebecca Long-Bailey, who actually hasn't, isn't a contender yet. She's a sort of putative contender. And Ian Lavery, who also hasn't exactly thrown his hat in the ring, but is sort of dangling his hat um, near the ring. Um, Helen, in terms of those parameters that we're discussing, who could that help or hinder in which combination out of that lot? Well, it's difficult to say exactly, but very broadly, the expectation is that a short time frame and not a lot of time for people to, to sign up to be supporters is likely to help the more established candidates. So Keir Starmer might benefit from a shorter time frame. Uh, and also, uh, a sort of candidate of the left, as you said, we don't know who that's going to be yet because Rebecca Long-Bailey, who had been the sort of name that had been bandied about, hasn't yet declared. Ian Lavery is the other name that's being in the frame there. He has also not declared. So we don't yet know who that might be. But the thought is that a shorter time frame and a shorter sign-up time might favour them. Whereas a longer time to bring members back into the party to allow registered supporters to sign up might play to the strengths of someone like Jess Phillips, who would be looking to sort of move the base a bit from where it is now. She would re realistically probably need a bit of an influx of new members. So the longer she would have to do that, potentially, you know, could have an impact. Thanks, Helen. I'll leave you to go and put your ear to the door of the NEC. Um, Sarah, what would be the, the sweet spot for how long people have to sign up if they want to be a registered supporter and how much they should pay? Oh, goodness. I mean, I don't think uh, th this is going to be a decision that I'm going to be any part of, and I don't have a Well, you'd have to be at the view. meeting now the, if you were going to be. The strongest view I have is that, you know, we've got the mayoral elections and lots of elections across the country in May. I want us to be well sorted by that point. Um, for me, I think that the selection of candidates here is, is excellent. We've got really strong candidates, really strong um, people with great experience backing Kia, um, because I think, you know, he's forensic in Parliament, and, you know, some of the best times um, I've seen in Parliament for the Labour Party in the last two and a half years have been when he's been uh, debating the issues because he is so forensic. Um, I think, you know, his history uh, in terms of the director of public prosecutions, the running of a large organisation, making difficult decisions, serve him in, in very good stead. And I think he is a unifier. He's, he's not factional. He, uh, you know, and, and one of the reasons why I think in, in Croydon, where I stood, you know, it's a leave seat, we increased our majority is because we all work together. We all get beyond all of that um, argument about which part of the party you're in and we all come together and I think that's what he will do and I think you know but I would happily serve under any of those um, candidates that you know there are good people and I think they all have strengths and I look forward to it being a good you know hopefully a, a, a friendly um, debate about who the next leader should do, be. Do you agree with Keir Starmer with what he has said in the last few days that actually if Labour had been a bit more remainy during the general election they would have done better? I think I mean this has been rehearsed many times but I think there are lots of reasons why we lost the election uh, you know Brexit was 
a big part of that and you could argue both ways in terms of what the policy should have been. Um, of course, uh, the leadership, you know, was an issue, the, 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 the policies. And, and I think also we need to look at, you know, the organisation of the party and how we managed to campaign. And, and we know that this has been coming in some of our seats for, for quite some time. So we're talking about years um, of losing uh, trust and losing relationships that we need to build up. So it's not one single thing that you can point at. What we need to focus on now is who is the leader who can bring us back together as a party so that we can start to make that case to the country again that they can trust us and that we can come up with good policies. We know we had some good mm. policies in, in the manifesto which were popular, but you know perhaps too many of them. And we, um, we know these things. And I think Kia is, is probably the best place to uh, bring us back together and, 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 and get a recovery as, as fast as we possibly can because people okay. in this country you know, need different policies. We've got a government that is not committing to put any... Well, they'll have to put up with these once for five years. Yeah. Um, yeah. Claire, um, you're from the Brexit party. Do you think Labour would have done better if they'd been the anti-Brexit party? No. Uh, well, maybe they would have done slightly better, but it would have confirmed the fact that they're no longer the Labour party. I think increasingly that's the problem, is that the Labour party don't feel to me like they represent Labour, people who labour, the historic roots of where they come from. And I'm not trying to... Um, do a kind of sentimental, you know, flat caps and, and, and the north and so on. But certainly in the northwest where I represent, I was shocked, genuinely, not because I'm a great supporter of the Labour Party, but I was shocked at the absolute uh, contempt with which so many people who had always voted Labour felt about the Labour Party because they felt they'd been treated with contempt. So, you know, was in that terms the Labour that, Party or was that just the Jeremy Corbyn? leadership the no, bit of the Labour no, Party. No, well actually, you know, actually the, the, the irony there is is that they previously thought Jeremy might be all right because he was a lever. I mean that's what they voted for actually if you remember in the last election and they then were completely disillusioned. There was then an anti-Corbyn factor, I'm not trying to downplay that, but I was standing as the Brexit Party so I was talking to people about those issues. I'm just saying, and it wasn't just the North West, you know, it was the North East, uh, parts of North, yeah, uh, uh, Wales, North Wales, where I'm originally from and so on and so forth. But anyway, just on, on the candidates then, it seems to me that, you know, Lisa Nandy was somebody who did go, uh, try and go a bit uh, uh, differently and try to respect the, the, the Leave vote. And I know that people say she doesn't stand a chance, but she's always struck me as somebody who's authentic and really uh, uh, tries to put herself forward. Uh, uh, you know, I always try to think about the issues and doesn't try and duck them. Um, I have to, I, 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 what I can't get over is the idea that people are putting Keir Starmer forward as a left candidate. He's supported by people like Paul Mason, who used to work with the BBC. He's basically saying he's the left candidate. You think, in what world? And I know that he's put out a, a campaign video that features a minor. So that must mean he's on the left and on the side of the working class. But my God, and he, I would have and thought he took the Labour government. To and court I, twice. I, I would have thought that possibly, possibly, uh, the voters might have thought that's a tad patronising. And um, and apart from anything else, he's seen as a Remainer at it, like a career politician. His time at the DPP was scary in the sense of illiberalism in terms of the kind of laws he brought in as it goes. So there you got it. And so, obviously we've had we've had Jess Phillips. And uh, basically coming out as the Remain candidate. I mean, you know, she, she for me, uh, of course, she's a Brummie, so that means she's down with the people. So, you know, it just, I am not enthused by what I see before. I think, so your candidate, Keir Starmer, he's slick, scary, right-wing mm -hmm. and responsible for the contempt that Leave voters felt towards the Labour Party. I mean, that's not at all what the impression uh, people in Croydon had of him when I was knocking on doors. He was the one person that people would refer to, actually, um, in terms of, you know, I like his style, I like what he's saying. Um, he's, he's absolutely not um, a kind of slick career politician. He's a man with great integrity, absolutely, and he's got experience and he's run big organisations and made difficult decisions, and I think that's what you need uh, in a leader. I mean, I, I, I hope I'll um, you know, contest will be a bit more friendly than the way Claire Fox has just sort of denounced all of the candidates. But um, you know, I do. I think Lisa has huge strengths. I do, and and as does Jess, and as does Emily Thornbury and and, and Rebecca. And, and and you know, we, we've got a good set of people here who could bring something fabulous to the party. But for me, Keir is the one who you know has that um, uh, ability in Parliament as well as that ability to run an organisation and to bring us together. And he is of the left. We're all of the left. We're in the Labour Party. That's what we are. Um, 
um, and you know let's let's not fuss about you know which end of the left you're from. Let's fuss about how we get a Labour government the, I, I to think, introduce some the, policies I mean, I, that will change people's I, lives. I watched the video. I've watched all their videos, but and, and I, I can see what Keir Starmer's doing. He basically understands to get the job, he's got to win the members. A lot of them still sort of you know want to fly the Corbyn flag, so he's sort of tilting a bit that way. Um, and then I guess. The thought is that maybe he'll move more to the centre of the Labour spectrum later. I don't know. But I think that what I want to see from all of them is actually people speaking to the country. I think this whole thing about the NEC today, it's interesting. It is important. But actually, I think for all the, the, the contenders, they've got to be reaching out to the country. Yeah, but it's and a I'm, selectorate at this yes, point, I not the that. electorate. I know that. But I think that actually one of the factors that they have to show is that they could be prime minister, they could win an election campaign with the country. And I also, I've got to say as well, we talked about Rebecca Log Bailey. She seems to be having an even longer holiday than Boris Johnson. <laughs> to be the favourite who's actually not even there, it strikes me as extraordinary. But I want to see them coming up with ideas. I, I, I'm seeing a lot of analysis at the moment. I'm seeing a lot of positioning. I'm not seeing that much in the way of what I would call ideas. Stephen, you presumably just want...